Hi, this is Greg Koopman, and today I'm going to discuss the second part of the two-part series, Dark Sky Weather API, using SSIS. If you have not watched the first part, I strongly recommend that you do. In that part, we discuss the general setting up an API key, accessing a sample URL that accesses a JSON file from the website, all at a very high level. In this video we're going to discuss a low level where we take the data from the website the dark sky weather website and bring it into our database environment in SQL Server through SSIS and more specifically through a C sharp script task we complete the lesson by shredding the JSON data into a table using the open JSON function Okay, well, let's first uh, take a look at what we're going to use in our uh, SSIS package. Number one, we're going to have two tables from the database SQL Server. Uh, one is we're going to call that uh, Weather JSON. And basically, all this is, and remember that what this example is showing you is a very, very simplified uh, example of how to do this. It's not a full solution. So, what this is just a, the major little art, uh, aor, you know, part of the heart that this makes this whole thing work. Outside of this, you have all sorts of metadata you'll pass in so that you can go day after sequentially, day after day, and pulling data and then all this other thing. But I'm not show, going to show you that. I'm just going to show you the main code you need in order to get to that API, grab that JSON data, bring it into a sort of staging table. And then, and as a JSON big var car max um, column, and then after that, taking that column and its data and uh, shredding it using the open JSON uh, function and putting it into another table. So the initial table we're going to push that into is called the weather JSON table. Okay, and that has one ta one field in it. Since SQL Server right now doesn't have a JSON data type, we put it into var car max. Okay. And uh, as soon as we get it from uh, Dark Sky, we put it in there. Okay, uh, Dark Sky only looks appears to only give you one day's worth of data at a time. So if you want to think, bring in a year's worth of data, you'll make 365 calls um, to that database, passing in the appropriate time values. Um, but in this, in our example, we're just going to do one example, one day. Okay, um, so that's weather JSON and then after we're done with weather JSON we're going to dump we're going to shred it and we're going to shred out the date uh, the hour the epic time uh, the temperature precipitation condition and condition law if you have columns so that's all we're going to do one day uh, one city um, for December 25th night 2017 it will be Dallas Okay, so now let's take a look at the package. I've already created the package, so um, okay. So here's a package. Uh, it's a very simple example. I've already written the code, so you don't have to watch me type at all. But you will be able to pause and study the code. Uh, basically, I just do a. There's a table I talked about, the weather JSON table, which is this where I'm going to dump the, the single day's worth of JSON data. Okay, so I truncate it first. Just keep everything clean so it's easier to show you the example. After that, this is where the real action happens, where I do the import JSON weather data. And this is a, a, a script task. Okay, so you would take, come over to your left side and you find your script task. And you just pull that in like this. Okay, that's what I did. So I'm not passing any variables. Again, this is a very simple example. So I go in here. I'm going to edit the script. Okay, and the script editor comes up. So let's just take a look at the main data here. So the things you have to add are by default, the namespaces are fine, but you need to add these two namespaces, the system data SQL client and the system.net client. Okay, so those two things you have to add at the top. And then down in the main method, um, you're going to add the following code. Okay, very simple. Of course, you're going to probably elaborate on this code more, um, enhance it more, obviously, as you write your s solution. But just to get a single's worth, of, a single 
days worth of data. This is what we're going to do. Okay, so here we have our URL. Okay, just like we did in the sample on, on part one of this series. You have your URL where you call the API in Dark Sky. Um, you use their syntax just like in the sample. Here's the key, the API key that you have to have when you register that identifies me. So what you know, if I take too much, I'm gonna have to pay for it. But basically I'm on a free subscription and it'll just start airing out until I um, give them my credit card. And I discussed that in the first part also. Now here is your latitude. Again, we discussed that in the first part. And also here's your longitude. All right, these are the coordinates for Dallas, Texas. Here is your epic time, which is a number of seconds from January 1st, 1970. Okay, and this is um, some additional information um, that's needed also. So the first thing I do is I create a variable for sync client and create a new web client. Okay, then uh, content, use sync client to download the string. So this downloads the, this uses the URL here, passes that URL and downloads the string and places it into content. Okay, through the sync client. All right. So the data is in the, at the, after this is run, the data is, that I showed in part one, is inside of the content, now the JSON formatted data for the day. Okay, so then after that, we're going to build, so here's all our data for JSON. Now, next we're going to put this into a SQL Server table, that weather JSON table. So I, I use some SQL client, like we showed up here, the, the, the SQL client. I use some of those methods and objects. So here's my connection string. This is my server I'm connecting to. My initial cata catalog is called weather, and I'm using integrated security. So here I'm using the connection, and I create the new connection with that connection string I, I, I labeled up here that I uh, created up there. And um, I, I also set the SQL store proc command to insert into weather JSON the JSON data into that column, the at JSON data, okay, with using that connection string. So at JSON data, right, is a parameter or a, a variable in this case actually a parameter that's shown here. So basically I'm storing in this parameter that content, which is adjacent content, which is up here, as a string and it's pushing it all in all that JSON content into this parameter. Okay? So then after I get those settings set up there and I do an open on that connection, I do an open on the connection. I do a stored proc, which is here, and I and I call its method called execute non query, and that will um, then execute this insert uh, statement, and that pushes the data into the table on SQL Server at that connection. Okay, and after that's done, I close the um, I close the connection, and that's it. So after that's done, it is pushed into the JSON. Uh, the weather JSON table. Okay, so there's all the code. That's all you have to, you know, you can play with it. You, you don't have to understand it a, a, a tremendously, you know, tremendously, but you, you, you need to understand a little bit, but you can, you know, pretty much use it, change your connection string, change your data, your your weather. As long as you identify the parts, you can use this, this code without being a big C-sharp programmer. Okay, so this is all in the script. So I exit out of that. This is an edit script to, to get to there. And I say, OK. So all that data that pulls it from there, from the Dark Sky website, is in that script. OK. OK, so now it's in that script. It will um, be sitting in the table over in, uh, into that weather table. OK. It's sitting in weather JSON in that column called 
JSON data. Okay, so this SQL command here, I have some code written. Okay, again, it, it just keeps it real clean. It just truncates the table here. Again, you won't do that in a real world situation, probably. Um, and so what this does is it's it does a few different things in this code. In fact, this code, um, it's a little hard to look at here, so I'm going to bring us over to the same code over in SQL Server so you can see how that works. So it's the same code as over in the script, so this, this is just a little bigger. So we got our um, truncate table. Clean up the table. Here I do the, the offset because it's all in that Greenwich Mean Time. So I use this later to determine the date, the proper date. Um, so here we use the open JSON table. Uh, first of all, we, we grab that JSON into a variable, into a bar car max variable and we um, pull it from the weather JSON and um, put in that variable. So then in this statement here we go and we select from the JSON and this is um, high, the hierarchy that we're pulling it from, those hourly, and um, we're pulling the time, the temperature, the precip intensity, the icon and summary as data. So it's probably better now when we look at that if we can go back and look a little bit at the at that JSON um, output. So if we look at a JSON output we have the hourly. See the hourly? So you, you have to be able to get this um, properly formatted so you you can climb the hierarchy to get to your data. So if you look at the data we're going hourly data right so there's an hourly and there's a data right and under data we have zero one right and each one of these these represent that hour of the day okay so if we look back over here we have time we have temperature we have precip intensity let's see if we got that so we got time right that comes under it so these are just the children of this hourly data. So there's time, there's temperature, precip intensity, precip intensity is there, and then we had icon and summary. So if you look at icon, let's see, do we see icon here? Yep, there's icon, which is cloudy, and um, the other one was summary. Right, so where's a uh, summary's right above it? So over here, so cloudy is like the more general. The icon is more general, and summary looks like it's a little more detail. Um, so again, and then it, it, it just goes ahead. That open JSON XML just goes and, and go, looks at all the children and all these attributes of the children and just pulls them all in. I uh, might be using the words wrong with Jason, but uh, that's basically what it does, and that's what pulls it all in, and that's what it's doing. So that's uh, I select all that into a um, common table expression called CTE temp. Okay, so I, I select from that data. This gives it this gives it the structure, and this then I just select from it here. Okay, and I stick it in the C temp table, which gives me 24 entries, and from there I insert into the weather by hour, the date, the hour, the epic time, temperature, precipitation, condition, condition long. These are my names for them. And then I just select these, um, their names from them over from CTE temp. Okay. Um, that's basically it. So if you look at that data, if you look at this, this particular code, you can study that and use that, okay, as your starter for your solution. Okay, gets you way down the road on this. Uh, I use this time diff UTC in here to get the date um, because it needed an offset based on Dallas, so it's like 
six hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds and you see that somewhere in here you can really drill down and look at that a little bit more but um it's a little bit complicated but you can review that statement this helps me that determines the date you probably use use something different in your solution it's a lot that's a lot easier but you have to get that offset uh to get the right um part of the greenwich mean time to to that reflects your numbers your, your times okay so let's go ahead and run this thing and we're going back over again this data reflected the same as what i just showed you and we'll say okay now i'm going to go ahead and come over here and extract i mean execute rather it's truncating the table it imports adjacent JSON weather data and then it shreds the JSON into an open we're using open JSON function right so when we go back over to our um, SQL server and I run the query against the JSON which is it's kind of like the staging right it's only one column right and that's JSON data it's in a var car max uh, data type so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go over and I'm going to create a new I'll create a new test. I'm just going to copy that. I want you to see how this works. So I'm going to copy. That's the data that comes back, right? And I stuck it in that table. Not formatted nicely or anything, right? So I'm going to say File, Save As. And I already have a JSON uh, file out there, but I'm going to replace that one. Um, it's trying to save as text. So I'm going to say All Files. And there it is, Test. Notice there's a JSON file, right? That means the, the extension to it is JSON. Okay, that's their, the extension. So it's test.json. Okay, now, so that I have it under tests here, right? So what I'm going to do, I just saved it. I think I saved it. I'm going to save it now. Yeah, now I saved it. So I'm going to come back over and I'm going to go to my internet so we can take a look at that file all right this is an old one here so let's just get rid of that one but i'm going to go ahead and if you wanted to see it in a formatted way that's what you do you'd save it out to a, a file you, that's not part of this process but that's i'm just doing this to show you the json itself so i'm going to say file open and i'm going to go to that test right the test json file i'm going to double click on it and there it is. So you see it's all formatted nicely in JSON. Uh, well, it formats it nicely when you bring it into a browser or maybe some other tools. So that's what really what it's going to parse through. All right, so that's that part. So now if I go over and I run the weather by hour, which is the shredding part of the, um, the shredding part that it did here. Okay, this order by. Okay, so I'm just going to select there, and this comes in a better order, even though it's luckily. Uh, but anyways, we could put an O in front of one, a zero. But as you see, you have your temperature. Again, this was, it has a date, the 25th of Christmas, 2017. And we have the temperatures for each hour of the day, right? Now, if we wanted to compare those, we could go ahead and, and try to compare them. And I have one up here. Uh, let's just compare these to the real deal. So I'll pull up the Wonder uh, Underground, Weather Underground. Um, even though that's not dark sky, uh, it does have a pretty good interface for this test and looking at it this way. So I'm going to pull up Dallas. And we're going to go ahead and just put these side by side here. And this is for Dallas, um, as you see, December 25th, 2017. So if we look down here, theirs doesn't go by the hour, but that's okay. We can get a kind of a look. So they're all within about one degree of each other. So at 12.53 in the morning, you know, the first hour of the morning, this was 34.33, they have 33. This is, let's round to 32.92, this is 33, about the same. 32.18, now we have to, they go every half hour, oh, here we have every hour. 
So that's 32, 32, 32, 31. So here we go, 31, 30, 30. So you see they're all within about one degree. Um, that could be rounding, that could be, you know, one might be at the airport, one might be at a uh, golf course, who knows where they are. But, you know, they might not be exactly the same place they're taking these temperatures. So 29, so if we look through here, let's say we look at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So here we got 44. 98 so if I go down to 3 45 right so perf right on so we go down to 7 30 8 o'clock at night that's 43 and that's 40 let's see that's about 8 o'clock so that's about 41 and a half and they were at 43 um, so you know it's it's one or one or one and a half uh, degrees within range there again they might be at different they're probably at different points uh taking these temperature readings because they're two different websites but as you see let's go to you know let's go to four o'clock in the afternoon so four o'clock in the afternoon we're at uh 45 and that's 45.54 so you see it's right on the money and that's you know basically taking a date that you know just any old date in the in the uh history and it comes back with the the data and I think it goes, it goes, I know it goes at least four years back, but I think it goes maybe 10 years back or maybe even more. So you got a lot of data you can bring in, in you know, to compare to your revenues, your sales at that time of day, et cetera, et cetera. You can go further with this, um, you know, because when you in your JSON file, you have, um, let's see, I don't have it up here now, but in your JSON file, you got, uh, let's look at a little further here. You got this other part, remember the current day. So you might want to, I think what we were doing, we would take all, let's say we were mostly interested in just the times the stores were open. So we would only take those dates. We would create the average for those. Um, but eventually went into a cube and, and we did lots of different things. We had the, um, min max temperature for the day and hour and all that kind of thing so it worked out really well but anyways um thanks a lot for watching i hope that you can use this information i i thought it was very you i you know I, I had to put it all together and find all this date this information and make it work so um hopefully i've saved you several hours of work by showing you this all right thanks a lot